This video is supported by PCBWay. If you're like me and always have an electronics project on the go, check out PCBWay.com. They offer some great services such as 3D printing, CNC milling, prototyping, but also a 24 hour turnaround on PCBs. Don't forget to check out their open source community, PCBWay Plus, and we thank them for supporting this channel. Here's me, angry at Apple because they wouldn't let me in. Um, I love computer history and it's the foundation of the world that we live in today. Now, I went to Silicon Valley and checked out the Computer History Museum, the granddaddy of them all, and they had some absolutely amazing machines. First, we have the first mouse. This is the prototype mouse and uh, uh, a great thing to see. Uh, look at that design and... The design later changed um, for the Auto Computer um, by Xerox, and uh, that had the rolling ball in the mouse. And you know, the mouse wasn't accepted when it first came out. Um, people were a bit confused about it and, and unsure of it, but we still use them today. And uh, here's a light pen as well, which uh, is amazing to see, and the Dvorak keyboard, which was another standard of a keyboard that was meant to be quicker, more efficient. I know there's a lot of people that still love the Dvorak keyboard, and uh, I think it's the, the biggest challenger out there to QWERTY, which remained. Now, it's great, these museums, because you get to see the development of things. So there's the development of joysticks. We also have trackables as well, which, uh, you know, they're kind of out of trend now, but I, I love the trackable. Uh, a barcode scanner as a cat. <laughs> don't know what that was. Um, the Altair as well. So this is the introduction of microcomputers and uh, virtual reality as well. So look at some of them VR glasses. <laughs> they look pretty awesome. They've also got uh, virtual reality gloves as well. And I would love to try some of this stuff out, but it was uh, all behind uh, cases, of course. And uh, especially this one, the Apple One. This is a very rare item, and uh, you probably see them going on eBay for absolutely insane prices, headline-grabbing prices, and this is the first Apple computer, and I love that it's kind of still in its wooden case and signed by Steve Wozniak. Now, this device I remember seeing in magazines. I think it was a Mac, and uh, it's a Macintosh that was ran on solar power, and... Um, converted into a bike uh, which just looks insane and uh, it was, I was quite surprised to actually see that there in working condition. Now a lot of games have their roots in these machines and this is one of the first video games which was Space War. Now this is awesome, um, they've done a custom controller, apparently it was really hard to use the original controller, this would run on mainframes and it influenced games like Asteroids. It would come on this tape that you would then put into the machine. That tape ended up getting distributed and used on all the mainframe machines. And I'm sure if you'd spent lots of money on a mainframe machine, you would be a bit annoyed when uh, the students came in and started playing Space War on it. But uh, eventually it got accepted. And then, uh, you know, we had the video game industry afterwards. And this is uh, punch cards. Now, punch cards um, were the way of storing data back then on an IBM machine. So it's awesome to see punch cards uh, for mainframes and this kind of paper format, which, which you know, if you tell kids today, yeah, computers used to run on paper, their, their mind would be blown. Now, this is a, a Univac as well, who were a really big computer company. A lot of these mainframes would uh, run and then they would have terminals connected to the mainframes. And uh, this looks like some some crazy huge control station with lots of inputs. And uh, just imagine working on that. That would be awesome. This was the IBM 360, which um, was one of the huge mainframes that ended up getting used and uh, in commercial application. Now, look at this uh, hard drive there. That is absolutely massive. And if you think a micro SD would uh, probably hold a million times more than you could hold on that hard drive. 
these are this is one of the terminals and um yeah it's it's pretty awesome to see these you know a lot of these machines got trashed and destroyed so uh seeing them in person uh is great and especially you know they require a lot of space so um, actually having a big building and uh, getting them in they must have had to you know lift these huge mainframes in there now this is uh, just an absolutely mad one cray one i always think the cray machines look like something out of a sci-fi movie um they're, they're insane and look at the wire wrap on the back there and uh uh, these are the, this is the foundation of computing really like i've seen cray machines and stuff before but nothing to this scale and also having these machines um like the selection of them available is 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 pretty fantastic this is the pdp8 so the one of the later ones in the uh, pdp range and it was it was just amazing to kind of go around and and, and see all this machine because uh you know in the uk we we didn't get this that much we there was the ibm and stuff like that but uh, a lot of this hasn't been kept now it was great seeing the roots of software applications so this is first version of autocad uh there was the uh auto as well and then we have the Pixar machine as well, which was another groundbreaking um, company uh, from Silicon Valley. And we also have Silicon Graphics and uh, the uh, huge Silicon Graphics machines, which uh, compared to those mainframes, don't look that bad. This was interesting. This was the first um, the famous teapot that was uh, rendered. Uh, was one of the first wireframe renderings and uh, really high-end 3D renderings and that led to like 3D animation and stuff. Here we've got um, a lot of the other systems. We've got the Kim one as well, which I was a really big fan of, you know, being a Commodore fan. Um, the Soul computer, the Altair, and this is the kind of start of the micros really. Uh, oh, look, there's an Amiga 1000 there. Um, we had some Amstrads, um, uh, a lot of the Atari's as well, like the 800 and the 400, um, and also the Apple II here. So this was the real start of the micro industry. Uh, we got the Pong machines, uh, some of the Pong clones as well. So uh, th they were around, and the prototype of the Atari 2600, which is amazing to see. You know, I, I'm a big Atari fan. Um, they're kind of the roots of computing and gaming, and um, you know, uh, the, the Amiga wouldn't be there without Atari. And uh, it's great to see the prototype. The the PDAs as well, uh, which were always good fun. And of course, MP3 copying and uh, piracy, which, uh, yeah, Napster was a huge thing. And uh, it was cool to see a kind of like look at, look at these modern things and uh, stuff that was happening later on with the introduction of the internet. So if you're in san francisco then definitely check out the computer history museum it's a really awesome place you know i had so much fun could have spent ages there and um i recommend it to everybody there you know this is the the granddaddy of computer history and uh you just really need to check it out but also if you're into computer history don't forget to check out my podcast so every single week i do the retro hour podcast so we get a guest on we interview a guest. These are some of the guests that we've had on. Me, Dan Wood, and Joe Fox. And we also do a section about the news. So the latest going-ons in the kind of world of retro. And uh, we cover stuff like, you know, games coming out, hardware hacks, new systems, updates for older systems as well. So thank you so much for watching.